Hi, my name is Gwyn Watkins. Uh, welcome to Build. And our next guest is Vela Lovell. She is one of the best parts of one of the best shows on television. She plays Heather on Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, the CW musical comedy series now in its fourth and final season. Before we bring her out, let's take a look at a clip. <laughs> Please welcome to the Build stage, Vela Lovell. Hey. Thank you, guys. So nice to see you here. I'm so excited to be here. Do you miss the purple extensions when you're not cheating? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I I would never really have like dyed hair, so it's kind of I'm kind of like living out my my uh, other self. Yeah, in that way, <laughs> it's like I'm getting it out of my system. Yeah. So um, my experience with Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, which I'm obsessed mm -hmm. with, is that people either don't watch it or they're obsessed with it. Yes, I think that's. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what has your experience been like with yeah, the fans? Yeah, I think there's like five of you guys. And the people who watch the show are like, it's like a small but really mighty base. Like, I feel like the people who watch the show are so passionate about it and so excited about it. So, or they just like haven't heard of it. So <laughs> it's kind of either or, but it's really awesome to meet people who have been affected by the show because... I think it just speaks very directly to some people, like especially if you love musicals or like you've had a journey with mental health, which probably all of us have. Um, I think it really can hit home for people. So yeah. people are usually very excited about have it. Have you had fans like knit you things or anything like that? No, I've never had a, knit, a knitted I situation. You're like Heather fans. I had like someone send me... Um, if for anyone who watches the show, the the, um, the theme song changes every year. And so the first um, season was an animated cartoon. And so someone did send me um, a keychain, which my friend actually <laughs> now um, has as his keychain. Of you? <laughs> of my face, yeah. And I was like, <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> So that's, yeah. And so you're in the final season, mm -hmm. fourth season. Yeah. Um, and you, how far are you into shooting the fourth season? We're shooting, um, we're on a week long break right now. Um, and then we're going to be shooting the 10th episode out of 18 for the last season. Yeah. Is it like hitting home yet that it's the last season? It, it'll come in waves. Like I think we're, we're all joking that it's kind of like senior year because it's our fourth year. So we're kind of like, we got into college. <laughs> But we're, like, getting sad to leave everyone. So it's, like, it kind of comes in waves. Like, when the first episode aired a couple weeks ago, we were, like, oh, my gosh. It's, like, the last first episode. And we all got really sad. Because you kind of, like, become a family, like, a weird family, um, just because you spend so much time together. So it's definitely, we're really going to miss each other, I think, especially when it gets closer to the end of filming. Yes. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So you, in particular, have had kind of a crazy journey with your character. Especially yes. last season and this season. Yes. Uh, which is really funny because mm -hmm. at the beginning, it seemed like yeah. Heather was sort of like the commentator. Like, she was sort of off to the side. A hundred percent. Yeah, she was just kind of like a stoner, like living the millennial dream of living with her parents and not really having to participate in her own life. And then, yeah, and then cut to this season. It's like... A 180, almost. How much did you know in advance about what was going to happen to Heather? Not really any at all. They, they kind of, like, it's it's kind of a fun ride just to, like, go with the punches. And they, they very much listen to the fans, which is really cool. Like, I think because the people who watch the show are so small and so so just passionate that they very much, like, pay attention to what they're responding to and try to give... Um, the characters all a complete journey. Like, I think every single character has had, like, such a complete arc by the end of it. So, um, but we never really know what's going to happen. So we're, we're just as surprised as everyone, like, reading the scripts, like, that's happening? Right. Well, you're um, the only one who had, you got a career and then had a baby. Yeah. And then, got, and then I don't know if you're I got caught the up. last yeah. one. I think we can spoil it because it already aired. You, right, you, yeah. You're married now. Well, the thing is, I see... Because because I think so many people watch our show on Netflix. Um, oh my gosh, are you dressed as um, from Glow? Oh, <laughs> just because my friends on Glow, and I was like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Um, anyway, so um, yeah, because our show, a lot of people watch it on Netflix. So I was posting pictures because Heather got married on the show, and I was posting pictures the day after, and everyone was like, I live in Australia, and you've ruined the show. And I was like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> So anyways, yeah, she got married last Friday on the show, um, 
which, yeah, so now she's had a baby. She graduated college. She's married, which I wouldn't have thought would have happened <laughs> no. season one at all. <laughs> I yeah. feel like it's not even really a spoiler because it's just such a crazy thing. That yeah. You're just, like, going along with the ride. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you just kind of have to, like, get on the ride because... Yeah, you never really know what's going to happen. Did so. you get emotional filming your wedding? I did, weirdly, because I, I'm not married. And so the, just the physical act of, like, walking down the aisle and people are looking at you and you're wearing a dress, I was like, this is intense. Um, so, yeah, I definitely feel like I got the, like, pseudo act of, of getting married. <laughs> I was like, I, okay, this is, this is a big thing. Yeah. But yeah, it was a really fun episode to shoot. and It was really sweet. It was really sweet, I know. Um, but yeah, like, from, I mean, just if you're an actor, you, like, never think you're actually going to get the, the jobs that you're auditioning for. And so with this job, I just kind of, like, chose the choice of, like, being super over it and super dry. And then to find out I got it and then playing it four years later has been such a weird ride and journey because I'm like oh I I didn't like you can't prepare for four years later yeah. when you're doing a five minute audition you know so so yeah I want to talk about the audition what was the, oh yeah what was the breakdown for Heather like what kind of character did you what she yeah in? I think it just said she's super cool and she's equally weirded out and fascinated by Rebecca <laughs> I think that was the character description and then it was just um, for anyone who watches the show, it was just like the very first scene when she meets Rebecca, when she comes knocking at her door. That was the only scene. And so I just, I did that. Um, I think you had to sing a song, or you could sing a song, but it wasn't required to sing. Um, Do you remember what you sang? I sang Halo by Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you're welcome for the Beyonce, whoever's watching this. Um, but yeah, I mean, I... I think I was at that point when I was auditioning, I was like, I'm just wanting to have fun auditioning because you never know as an actor if you're gonna, like you probably will just not get this part. So you might as well like have fun and you know, be excited to play this character for five minutes. And you were kind of right out of school too, right? Yeah, yeah, so I, had, I graduated in, uh, I went to Juilliard for grads. I actually went to NYU for undergrads. So I'm like, I'm right back here. Right like the corner. Right around the corner from the Tisch building. It's kind of surreal. Um, but yeah, so I graduated from Juilliard for grad school in May, and then I got this audition in June, and then got it in, yeah, late June or early July. So it was like, it was pretty early in that, but I was like, they were, they were, I was going on a few auditions at like in that month, and I was like, I don't, I'm probably not gonna get this like, you know, CBS show, so like I might as well have fun, and then, it, yeah, so I, I just did that one audition, so then, <laughs> I mean, that one scene, so, and then they were like, okay, we're going to have you do a Skype session with Rachel and Aline, who's Aline Brush McKenna, who's the creator. And, um, and in our Skype session, our like, Skype callback, Rachel and I found out we were both at NYU at the same time and didn't know each other. Oh, that's so funny. So it was like, because she was like, oh, so you went to Juilliard? And I was like, yeah. And then I went, um, I went to NYU for undergrad. And she was like, wait, what? And she was like, wait, when did you graduate? And then we're like, wait, do you know like Molly McAdoo? We're like, we're just like finding out that we know all the same people during this Skype call, which was kind of crazy. Um, so we kind of found that out and made that connection and then. I think they gave me a couple notes and I did the scene again and then I got it and then I literally flew out and met everyone like the day before we did like the TCAs, um, like this big panel. And I didn't know anything about the show. I hadn't filmed or anything. And they were like, so tell us about Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. I was like, it's going to be great. <laughs> but I didn't know anything other than my one scene. So, um, yeah. So did you base the character on anybody? Um, I feel like I took... No, I, not really anyone I know. I think everyone has a little Heather in them, like at moments, like that kind of over it quality. But I feel like there's little hints of um, um, Aubrey Plaza's character from Parks and Recreation in there, and it. and um, Daria, and I don't know. It's like everyone needs that. Like, what are you doing? You know, especially because Rachel is. And and her character are so energetic and full of life. I think it was like a really fun energy dynamic to play with. Was it clear from the beginning that you were going to be singing and dancing a lot? I was like hoping it wasn't <laughs> that I wasn't going to have to because I mean I love to sing and I love to dance, but I don't consider myself a singer or a dancer. So it's it was kind of ironic that I got 
placed on a musical television show. But yeah, pretty early on, it was like uh, everyone's going to be doing it, even if because we have like Broadway singers mm -hmm. and dancers, and then we have. Um, Pete Gardner and I joined the show at the same time we both weren't in the pilot and we were both like after we did our first interview not knowing anything about the show we were like wait do you sing <laughs> Pete was like I don't sing and I was like I, yeah I'm not really a singer um but it's been such a fun challenge because it, it just kind of asks you to rise to the occasion and we have an incredible like musical team with Adam Schlesinger um and um, Stephen Gold, and then our choreographer, Catherine Burns, is incredible, and she'll just work with you to see like what moves you can do and rehearse with you as much as you need, so everyone gets like the attention that they need. Yeah, I mean, it really seems like everybody, like I've, I'm surprised not everybody had to do like a dance audition. No, so I know. Much choreography. It's really crazy, the, because even like Pete says he's not a singer but he has an incredible voice and Scott Michael Foster also says the same thing but he has an amazing voice and it's just kind of like everyone um th they very much I think focused on the acting first so it's kind of I think a happy accident that everyone ended up um being like so musical and I actually played piano for years so even though I don't consider myself a singer I'm very musical and mm -hmm. so it I think everyone's skills kind of came together to form this weird <laughs> this weird family and everyone because everyone has a theater background for the most part everyone's very supportive mm -hmm. um and kind of community based which is great yeah what uh what was your most memorable musical number that you participated in um it's probably a tie between i got to like soul train out of the um the 70s number um, in season two, oh, oh, we'll never have problems again. Yes. And that was kind of amazing because they like did it up. Like it looked like Soul Train and they had the like the crane and like it was just like it was it was awesome. And they had they didn't get to show it, but they had like roller skating dancers, like these dancers who could like roller skate down the soul. It was just so much fun. And we like actually had a Soul Train at the end of like shooting that day, which was really cool. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, and then also the moment is me, which was um, the song Heather got to sing in the third season. That was your big solo number. It was my big, yeah. my big number, and it was really fun because Catherine had these amazing, like, really extra energetic <laughs> dancers behind me, and then I was supposed to give nothing, and I just kept looking behind me and being like, "Oh my gosh." <laughs> You guys are going for it, so that number is fun. kind of amazing because you mm -hmm. sing deadpan, like yeah, you talk that hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, it was because especially because like the 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 music is so like like this is the time, you know, and so it was really hard to like not do that, but. Um, Yes, yeah, so we had to work on it a little bit in the recording booth because they were like, no, can you do le like less? Like they were like, just make it sound just like nothing. <laughs> so it was a challenge, but it was really fun. At the same time, I feel like that song's going to pop up on like the Miss America pageant or something like <laughs> I at hope some so. point. Yeah. <laughs> Because it's such a great, like, anthem. Yeah, actually, one of the writers on, because we, like, put out an album, um, there's, like, a soundtrack for each season, and one of the writers actually has, like, she sang it genuinely on the, so if you, like, get the soundtrack, she's singing it, like, for real, and it's, it's a good song. It is a good song. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I want to know, um, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure you talked about, like, a sense of community. I'm sure you all help each other out on these, like, difficult yeah. musical numbers. What is everyone in the cast the best at? The best at? Yeah, like who do you go to when you need help with like a oh, dance step or yeah. like a song? Um, Gabrielle and Vinny for, uh, Gabrielle who plays Valencia and Vinny who plays Josh, um, they are incredible dancers. Like they both danced um, on Broadway in national tours. And so actually in David Hall, who plays White Josh, he's an amazing dancer, but he, yeah. he, he wouldn't say it, but he's really good. Um, so they're really good for like picking up choreography and stuff and Donalyn is an incredible singer, so I feel like she's good at, like, beats and counts and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Um, and Pete is our dance captain, our unofficial <laughs> dance captain, um, just because of his spirit. Aww. So, yeah, <laughs> if you need, like, pumping up, like, Pete will do that, yeah. That's really cute. It is really cute, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, you've said uh, before that 
when you're um, auditioning for things, you get a lot of different ethnicities thrown at you. Yeah, definitely. How does that affect your experience in the audition room? In the audition room? Yeah. Well, it doesn't so much in the audition room because I think it's like um, I just try to inhabit the character of like whatever story I'm telling that day. Um, But it's definitely, um, yeah, it's definitely like an interesting conundrum to have because I'm like, okay, so I can, if, if someone doesn't know what ethnicity I am, then I guess they're just kind of putting on it whatever they're kind of reading in me whatever like works for the story Mm -hmm. so it's this interesting thing where um I just don't say anything in the audition room I just do the scene and then they're kind of like I think uh kind of putting on whatever story that they see in it so it, it is an interesting thing where I sometimes feel like a little bit like a chameleon because I'm just like taking whatever um interpretation people are seeing in me and I'm like, okay, I think you think I'm this, which is fascinating. Yeah. How many different accents have you learned? I've tried, I tried to work on a lot in school at Juilliard just because I was like, I feel like I'm going to get a bunch of things thrown at me. Um, yeah, the weirdest one that I learned that I, have, I probably will never have to do is like an Irish accent. I was like, I'm not sure why I'm learning this. But yeah, <laughs> Irish and Scottish. I'm like, this is probably not going to come in handy. But you never know. You never know. So... Uh, and you were you learned a Pakistani accent for the big sick. Yes, yeah, yeah. I worked with one of my vocal coaches in at Juilliard on that because I just wanted to get that right. And then the cast was incredibly supportive as well. Were you based on a real person? Because I know that was kind of a real. Oh story. yeah, I don't think I was no, but I think I think they were really smart to add that character because. Um, I think so many times in romantic comedies, it's like, oh, this it's so clear that these two people are supposed to be together. Yeah, you know, The other person is terrible. Because <laughs> everyone else is terrible, right. And so I think it was a testament to Emily and Kumail's um, writing that they were like, actually, this, this is a complicated choice. And to add a character that, like, really did connect with Kumail, and in another world, they would have really gotten along great and might have fallen in love. But it's like even the most perfect person in the world, if you're in love with somebody, the most perfect person in the world isn't going to compare to that person, you know? Yeah, no, I found it to be a very memorable role because of that, because you mm-hmm. don't usually see that in romantic comedy. I know, but... Like, oh, there's this other person who's actually really awesome, and they're Yeah, out. but that's so true. I mean, in life, there's a, ma- there's a million amazing people that you can connect with, and it's about, like, who do you actually, like, choose to be with and connect with in a special way, you know? Um, so I, th- I thought that was incredibly, like... Um, nuanced of them um, to add that character at all. Yeah. Yeah. Great movie. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It was good. I mean, it, it's crazy with independent films. You don't think they're ever going to... You're like, I hope it comes out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And so it, it's amazing, like, the journey that film had. It was awesome. Yeah. And you were on another show premiering in a couple weeks, which is... Yes. You were on The Princesses of Power. Yes. Shira, the reboot of Shira, which was an 80s cartoon, um, is coming out on Netflix in a couple of weeks. I'm so excited about that. And tell me about who you're playing. Um, I play the mermaid princess, <laughs> which is my dream come true. Um, so her name is Mermista, and she is like the princess of the sea, the sea world. Um, not sea world, <laughs> but the sea world. Um, and she like can control water and like kind of like that's her superpower. She can her legs turn into a um, turn into a fish tail and she becomes a mermaid. And she's kind of like a cousin to Heather, like from Crazy Axe. Like she's a very dry mermaid. Princess. Ironically. Ironically, she's a dry mermaid, yeah. Um, yeah, so she's kind of like very cool and dry, but then she um she joins the rebellion and helps Shira to fight the evil horde. Um but it is like even if you didn't watch the cartoon when you were little or if you have kids, it's like we saw a couple of the first episodes and it's so great and it's so like female power and um working together and like all the princesses are they're not like these skinny kind of perfect princesses that you see. They're like weird and awkward and tall and big. And um, we have like a queer couple princess. And it's really, it's a, they, and they have brown skin and black skin. And it's really incredible. It's like 
everyone everyone should watch it. <laughs> That's really exciting because I loved that show when I was a kid. But yeah, it all looked exactly alike. Right, like exactly. even the boys and the girls looked exactly alike. Yeah, I think they're just, just kind like of like, like yeah, type. we'll just use that. That that seems like a good body type. Yeah, so it's they're all different body types and and they're all strong and. Um, yeah, it's an incredible thing to be a part of. I'm so excited about it. Uh, I want to ask you one last thing about Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Yeah. Which is, has there been a movie discussed for after? Oh. Is that something that's come up? No. Is there? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm hoping. I don't want it to end. No, but um, we did do, they did do a tour last year, um, which I couldn't do because I was doing a play at the time, but um, I did one of the shows in San Diego, and... They're so much fun. The live shows are so much fun. And so actually, I think we might, there's talk of doing a tour after the show. Um, I think they were saying Brazil. Apparently people watch the show in Brazil. Big in Brazil. Yeah. So maybe we'll go to Brazil. I don't know. But it would be really fun to do a tour after because the fans are so excited. And it's like everyone's singing along. And it's like, it's a blast. Yeah. Uh, we have a couple questions from the audience. Really? Mm. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Uh, so my question is, since it's Halloween, uh -huh. um, I was, aside from nostalgically watching Hocus Pocus. Yeah, which I actually really might do <laughs> tonight. Um, so other than that, yeah. what are your favorite kind of Halloween activities or rituals? Um, I do always love to dress up, but I usually never, like, plan out. Oh, my gosh, Broom Daryl. Oh yeah. my gosh! I made that, and they wouldn't let me bring it in. That's that it amazing. Was a weapon. Yes, that's <laughs> incredible. Um, uh, yeah, I feel like I always do like a last-minute costume, and I have to explain it to people. Um, like it's like people don't get it, um, which maybe is my Halloween ritual. It's like being like, so this is what I like. Last year I was from Game of Thrones, like. Oh, now I can't remember her name. Oh, Miss Sande, like Khaleesi's assistant. But I was like her modern day assistant. So I had like a Bluetooth <laughs> and I just kept being like, Khaleesi, I have the dragons on line three. They want to know. And everyone was like, what? Who, what are you doing? And I was like, so it's Khaleesi's modern day assistant. And yeah. Anyway, so yeah, I think that's my ritual. Explaining last minute costumes. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Is this working? I maybe. Yeah. Um yeah, so first off, that's an awesome costume. Thank and you. And I'm sorry that nobody else Thank got you. it. I dressed up as n not anything so creative, but I was Daria one time at a 90s party and mm -hmm. clearly wasn't the right generation there because <laughs> everybody nobody got it and I it, like it was perfect, oh, so man. It was disappointing. Aww. But speaking of sort of being a character, mm -hmm. if you were any other character on the show, if you had the chance to one day just swap characters, who would it be? That's a good question. Um, I think I would be um, Valencia, G Gabrielle Ruiz's character. Why? Because it's really fun. I, I think she's done an incredible job playing the character, and she's so funny. Um, I think it's so fun, like the mean girl, the mean girl thing that like, and also the journey that she got to go on where she's the mean girl. And now she's like exploring what it means to be nice and to have friends. And she's just like, Gabrielle brings such a great like curiosity to that. And I think it'd be a really fun character to play. It's always fun to play something and then flip it on its head. And she's done that so great. So I would be Valencia for a day. Yeah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Um, well, one, I got a notification on my phone this morning with an idea for a last-minute Halloween costume that I must have set in the past year. Uh -huh. um, so if you want that. What was I'll it? It's a ghost writer. So I guess it's you dress up as a ghost, but you're writing. That's good. And I must have set that <laughs> sometime in the past year, but you're welcome to take it. I thought you were going to say from the PBS show, Ghost Writer. No, no, just like a ghost that writes, but... As okay. a ghost writer, like, you know, right. the actual right, 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 yeah, yeah. This is getting too long. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no. like, why am I still talking about this? Um, I was wondering, um, because you know the show's ending and you're still filming, if you have any projects coming up that you're excited about or if you're just waiting to see what happens. Yeah, I mean, she was coming out in a couple of weeks, which is exciting, but we've actually been working on that for, like, a year and a half, so it's kind of like, uh, or I've been working, they've been working on it longer, um, so it's kind of like uh, that was a long process in the making. But, yeah, I don't really have anything on the horizon, which is both scary and exciting and weird because we've had this show happen for the last four years. So yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, 
Which is a fun place to be, yeah. Open horizon. <laughs> Back at the auditions. <laughs> Back at making weird choices and auditions. Yeah. It's worked out well for you so far. Yeah. So. <laughs> you can watch Crazy Ex-Girlfriend Friday nights at 9 p.m. on The CW. Previous seasons are streaming on Netflix if you need to catch up, which you should. And She-Ra and the Princesses of Power is streaming on Netflix beginning November 16th. Everybody give it up for Bella Lavelle. Thank you guys so much. <laughs>